should you take progesterone if you're trying to get pregnant? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford and I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and I talk about fertility and hormones every single day. And today I wanna to talk to you about progesterone. This is not my first time talking about progesterone. However, I'm seeing more and more people come see me and they're taking progesterone. And these are educated people who are trying to do everything they can to get pregnant, yet they're actually doing something that's hurting them. And that's what I wanna break down with you about progesterone. If you are new to the channel, welcome. This channel exists so that we can spread information about your bodies, your health, your reproductive system, so you can learn more about your own body and hormones. So please subscribe and share and spread this information with more people. So if we're gonna talk about progesterone, what we are going to talk about is who needs supplementation and when. I have talked more about progesterone this week, probably than ever. And clinically, when I'm seeing patients and we're talking so much about it, it's just making me wonder what is going on out there. So number one, let's remember the body is not supposed to have progesterone every single day. And so if you are going and getting diagnosed with estrogen dominance or being told your progesterone is low, caution with what comes after. It doesn't mean that may not be true, but what I am finding is that some people are having big blood panels drawn by people who don't know how to interpret them or where they are in their cycle, and then they're getting prescribed something. So here's what I mean by that. Let's talk about the normal cycle. Inside your ovary are all your eggs. Every month you have a group of eggs come out of a vault inside your ovary. And from this group, one egg is going to be selected to ovulate. Eggs are microscopic, so each egg actually grows inside a follicle. The brain sends out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. FSH is well named and it's going to get a follicle to grow. As that follicle starts growing, it makes estrogen. Now estrogen is so important. It gets the lining to start growing, preparing for a pregnancy. It feeds back to the brain. So the brain drops the amount of FSH it needs to send because we only need one egg. And estrogen works in the brain to make you feel good and happy and energetic. And this is why in that follicular phase, the first part of a cycle when an egg is growing or a follicle is growing, FSH is the predominant hormone from the brain. Estrogen is the predominant hormone from the ovary. And you really, you don't have any progesterone in this phase. And that's very, very normal. So the entire follicular phase is estrogen dominant progesterone low. After you ovulate, when that egg makes enough estrogen, so it's about 200 picograms for about 50 hours, that's going to signal to the brain that you have a mature egg. And the brain is then going to send out a surge of a different hormone called LH or luteinizing hormone. LH is a very important hormone and what it does is it allows that follicle to rupture and it allows the egg to come out. So job one, that's ovulation. If you have pain with this, cause you can feel that sometimes that's called middle schmerz, which means pain in the middle. It's a German word for ovulatory pain. Now that follicle forms back together and it becomes the corpus luteum. And so luteinizing hormone stimulates the corpus luteum and the corpus luteum is making progesterone. This is what makes progesterone in the luteal phase. Luteal phase is the time from after you ovulate until when you get that next period. And then we say, if you get pregnant, you really don't end the luteal phase, it keeps going. But in that luteal phase, what is happening is this corpus luteum is making progesterone and progesterone is being stimulated in pulses from the LH pulses from the brain. So you have LH pulsing, stimulating that corpus luteum to have pulses of progesterone. So progesterone can be anywhere from three to 40 nanograms at any moment in the luteal phase, pending when you're drawing blood in relation to an LH surge from the brain, and you don't know that. So normal, no progesterone, you ovulate, and now you have ups and downs of progesterone ranging in this three to 40 range for the luteal phase. So if you come in and you get a blood draw for progesterone, if it's over three, all it can tell me is that you ovulated. The end. There's no progesterone level that's telling us the luteal phase is adequate in the luteal phase. Now, when you're pregnant, progesterone should be a certain level. So when you're doing pregnancy checking of progesterone or fertility treatment, and we're trying to get there, that's a different situation. Because in pregnancy, as soon as you get pregnant, that embryo 
is in the uterus about one week after ovulation, and it starts to grow into the uterine wall, and it makes HCG. And HCG is the hormone that we all know because you pee on the stick, and it turns positive. But HCG is now, well, it binds to the same receptors as LH. So HCG binds to the same receptors, and so now it is constantly stimulating that corpus luteum to make progesterone. And because a good normal pregnancy makes HCG approximately doubling every two days, you now have an exponential rise in HCG. Therefore, you have a constant yet increasing stimulus of progesterone production from that corpus luteum. So you went from this pulsatile production, very normal, and now you get pregnant and now you have a constant stimulus and your progesterone is going to rise. And that is pregnancy, different than what we see before we're pregnant yet in the luteal phase. Yet people are applying this pregnancy data saying, oh, we need a level of 15 or 20 or higher to represent a good pregnancy into the luteal phase. And then they're putting people on progesterone, yet they're not giving them instructions on how to use it. So we're going to go over that because what's happening is the pregnancy data is to try to help us diagnose a uterine pregnancy from an ectopic pregnancy or an inevitable miscarriage. Because one of the ways that a pregnancy that's not dividing normally talks to the body is it's not making HCG at that constant interval. And because the corpus luteum can only live from brain stimulation for about 14 days, the brain's going to stop sending out those LH pulses. And if you don't have high enough HCG, you're not going to make as much progesterone. Therefore, that low progesterone is often seen in inevitable miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy cycles. So this leads to confusion because people who are having recurrent miscarriages might get these pregnancy progesterones drawn and they're always low and we feel like progesterone is the problem. And I'm not saying it's not, but I'm not saying it is. And I'm not saying, I haven't told you how to fix it yet because what's happening is people are fixing it wrong. So number one, progesterone we wish overcame all of these miscarriages. I went through a bunch of losses and I wish progesterone could come in and save them all. If you're going to give progesterone, it might help. I do think there's a certain amount of people who are having luteal phase deficiency or low progesterone. It's contributing to their miscarriage or their loss rate. And it's probably an ovulatory issue. If you're not ovulating a good enough corpus luteum, it can't make the progesterone it needs to make. So personally, I like ovulation induction, clomid or letrozole, ovulate better, it'll make more progesterone. But I also often give progesterone, and I don't think it's wrong to give progesterone, but if you're going to give it, what the studies support is that it needs to start after ovulation because you're not having progesterone before. Progesterone opens and closes that implantation window. So if you start progesterone before you ovulate, you have now closed your implantation window and when you have an embryo ready to implant those are not synchronous meaning the uterus is so interesting it gets all this estrogen to prime it once it starts being exposed to progesterone it's going to have this perfect level of receptivity and once you're past that an embryo can't implant and this is the entire premise with many forms of birth control, especially progesterone only birth control, because daily progesterone is giving this constant progesterone exposure to the uterus and making it so that you can't implant. Progesterone birth control does not typically prevent ovulation. So things like a progesterone IUD or a daily mini pill, those often are not really preventing ovulation. They're really working their mechanism of action much more at the uterus. So if you go somewhere and get diagnosed with low progesterone and somebody gives you a prescription for progesterone and says you're estrogen dominant or your progesterone low and you should take this every day. You should not if you're trying to get pregnant. Or they tell you you should take it um, just flat out days 14 to 28 of your cycle. Probably wrong because you need to start it after ovulation. And what the studies are looking at as the best time is that if you have a current pregnancy loss or we're worried that progesterone could be an issue for you, if you're going to replace it, number one, we should use vaginal suppositories, not oral pills. Number two, we should start it three days after ovulation, which means you need to be able to reliably and predictably track your ovulation. I have some videos on that for you. But if your periods are irregular and you can't track your ovulation, you should not be just randomly taking it during those cycle days. Is it going to harm you if you're already pregnant to take progesterone? No. Is it going to harm you if you start it too early? Yes. And that's why we say three days after ovulation is a safe window. So what I want you to know is that 
you should not have all these hormones every single day. The body's hormonal balance is a constant dynamic flux that in a normal cycle, you know your hormones are balanced because you have regular cyclic periods. And if you don't, you might have a problem. But even in a normal cycle, you're not supposed to have these set levels of estrogen progesterone every single day. First half of the cycle is estrogen dominant. The second half, you have both estrogen and progesterone. You shouldn't have progesterone every day. So if somebody's telling you to take progesterone, if they're telling you to take estrogen, if they're telling you to take testosterone, please know it's going to blunt the brain's response for other hormones. And it does change the uterus. It can thin out the lining. It can also cause issues with a developing fetus. So no, thank you. If you're trying to get pregnant, also be wary of chemicals and compounds that have estrogen-like properties because that can change the brain's ability to signal or interpret signals because this is a really important system. So things like maca, vitex, chaseberry, I don't love those in the average regular person, but a lot of people will be on these. Warning sign for biotin, if you're having periods that are irregular or you're going to the fertility doctor, because biotin can actually bind to our steroid hormone assays and in high levels, it can actually make our blood test not make sense with what's really going on. So just want you to be aware of the world around you. And if somebody's trying to put you on a daily hormone or they're just giving you these random dates and they're not timing it to your cycle, big red flags, please think, are they really a hormone expert? Who are they? What are their credentials? And if there's any, any doubt, please see a fertility doctor. I hope this helped you understand progesterone a little bit. I have some extra videos about it. We'll link down below and would love if you would ask questions. That's how we get topic ideas for more of these videos. As always, you can find out more information on the As A Woman podcast. And thank you, friends.